Hey Roses, it's Shiro Studios. And today my dogs are barking. No, I'm kidding. Today we're going to today we're gonna be doing another classic video. So I'm working on a lot of customs and commissions because obviously you guys know I'm going to college pretty soon in less than two months now because I start moving in like around the 20th i don't know exactly know when but i need to pack like everything like my entire life to bring to a tiny little college dorm room yay anywho let me show you guys what i have been working on all right so we have all these horses that are primed right now um that i already am working on so this is a commission oh and lovely paint on the fingers you know um so this is a commission I've been working on for a really good friend and I redid the braids um, on him because he just had a really long mane before that. And then this one is a Safari LTD one that I got I think off of Mercari and I'm just priming her because she has a bunch of weird lines. I don't know what's going on there but I have a commission on the Lipizzaner Stallion. And then I'm planning on doing um, a Ravicano pattern on this guy, but I want to get his his body like smooth so I can use pencil on him. And that's a lot easier when you have a smooth surface. This is a Mojo horse, I believe. Yeah, I think so. And uh, the Mojo Warmblood, I'm going to be doing a Palomino on him. Then over there, we have the Camarge Mare, which I'm doing a commission on. This is a dog I'm doing a commission on. The ears are supposed to be kind of cr kind of crazy. I think it's really funny looking to look at a lot. And then this is this is a Mojo pony that I'm working on. It is a I think it's a Shetland gelding. Really adorable. I love this mold so much. This is a Safari LTD horse that's having a little bit of a standing issue. So I kind of like put this in between to try and like keep the legs apart from each other so it will balance and stand eventually. This is the Safari LTD Stallion, Icelandic Stallion and um, he's going to be a really cool pinto I found on the internet. Kind of has this really funky shading that looks really cool. Um, my primer, for those of you who follow me on Instagram know that my primer has been hating me lately. Um, it's because of the humidity. Oh my god, I didn't even realize it was that bad on the stomach. Ugh. And this side is totally fine, which is so annoying. So, um, I'm gonna have to redo this side, um, obviously. <laughs> what the heck. So, I don't really, it's really annoying that this happens. This is a horse. It was originally Safari LTD Arabian. I'm so sorry, my dog's in the background. They're, they're just having fun. Um... So I redid the mane and the tail. It was originally like blowing in the other direction. Oh my god, Charlie. They sound like they're like having seizures. What the heck? I promise they're fine. Um, this is a Safari. They're they're just having a lot of fun. Wow. Okay, this is a Safari LTD um Mustang, and I turned her into a du Dunal Dunalino. I, I'm saying that wrong. Dun it's like a Dun pair. <laughs> Done with double cream jean. I don't know how to say that. Dunalino, I think. And then for my conga, I have another Frisian stallion that I'm going to be turning into a bay. And I have so many of him right now. I think I have a Palomino, a chestnut, a gray, a and a buckskin so far. So he'll be added to that conga. And then, of course, I have the original model. Some of the horses that I've been working on are my Fjord Congo. So on this one, I have a heart mane. And then on this one, I have like a, I don't know how to say that. Um, just, I guess, I don't know what the name for that is. And then I have like a red, reddish um, dun. And then like a tan dun. And then a really light dun. So I'm doing like a whole Congo of Fjords, hopefully. And this is a horse that I recently finished that I am honestly so, so proud of. Um, so this was the Safari LTD um, uh, Rocky Mountain Stallion. And I need to fix the dots because um, on the lips, but 
basically or the it's it's called mo mo modeling mo molting i can't say words it's not that bad on this side but i need to fix it on the other side but this was a really tough class because i had to do so many so many white layers but i ended up turning really nice um and yeah just like a lot of details and everything i'm really proud of him he turned out really nice and this is his baby child as you can see and the pony shelf is super full at the moment so that's kind of an issue and then this is a commission that i'm working on and the weird thing is so i did this one and then it started separating like that one i was showing you earlier with the stupid varnish um and then i just redid it and it's totally fine and it's just oh i don't understand why does that happen i have this mirror here for an upcoming commission and then this one oh god hello you're attacking her um i need to take off the main i was originally going to customize this one a long time ago never got around to it and now someone has ordered um a rearing stallion with a custom mane so i'm going to take this mane off and then give him a nice long flowing mane as the person has requested and then he'll be on his home on the way home in iceland this is so cool so I have been busy, busy, busy. And so the plan is, <laughs> fun times. I really wanted to get a job. So um, yes, today I had an interview at Taco Bell. <laughs> so I'm gonna be working at Taco Bell starting on Monday until the other job that I got hired for like starts because the restaurant like hasn't opened yet because it's a new restaurant and the person was like oh yeah you know like we'll be open and like they still haven't opened so i'm like i can't wait for this i want a job now so i'll have this and then i'll have that so i probably won't i don't know if i'll still be able to i'll probably still be able to do the same what the heck is going on i'll probably still be able to do quite a few commissions but not when i'm at school because I can't bring everything, like, if I'm, if I'm gonna have a roommate, like, they're gonna hate me. And also, like, I can't just be spray painting, like, in my dorm hallway, you know? And I gotta focus on school. But in the meantime, a lot of people have asked, too, like, are you still gonna make videos? Like, yeah, I can make videos. That's, like, totally different than painting in my dorm room. Um, I think I'll probably be able to bring some of the tack stuff, though, and I'll do, like, tack tutorials, so that will be fun. The thing is, I always try to work in order of the commissions that I have. It doesn't always work that way, though, for um, various reasons, as you probably can guess. Some horses take forever to drive for some reason, and some of them just, like, literally drive super quickly, and I don't really understand, but what can I say? Some colors are different. So, a lot of people have asked me what kind of, like, palettes things that I use. So I recently got this app that I really like. This is not sponsored at all. It's called Palette Cam and you just take like, you just go to like the different colors that you want and it takes it for you. And so like, I have all these different palettes that I use for my commissions and everything. And it is super duper useful. I highly recommend it. And that way I know that I'm getting all the colors right on the horses that I'm doing. And yeah, it's just really nice to use. So I always keep my reference up usually when I am doing this. And the nice thing about having an iPad Pro is that I can watch Netflix or listen to an audiobook at the same time. I swear to God, my dogs sound like freaking cats. They don't even sound like dogs. That is just totally annoying. That sounds like a cat. So this is a horse that I'm doing. So I need to add some white markings for her. And what I do for white markings, I have this lovely yogurt top, um, as we can see here. Um, some people have seen me use apple barrel and they're like, wait, but you hate apple barrel. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan for base coats or like literally anything else besides using it for some white markings and eyes because it does dry super fast. So that's like one thing that's actually nice about it. But that's also the downside because it gets all clumpy and gross. So I'm adding some... That is, what is this? This is airbrush thinner or yeah, so, or paint thinner. So I add that and that helps it take longer to dry and it also thins it down. 
so it's not so bulky and clunky so i just mix that and to get it to a really nice thin um it's a little watery you want it like watery milky and then i just add it on and the thing is it, it will dry and it won't be fully opaque it will be slightly transparent and that's okay you basically just want it so that it's why is this coming off am i is this gray this looks gray to me what's going on is there black under here some color is gray in this oh maybe i was painting a base coat that was gray okay whatevs all right anyways um i just add this to the areas that i want it in and then it's totally fine if it's not fully opaque because we don't want it if it is fully like if i just used the paint straight out of the bottle it would be super clunky and gross as it is i mean sometimes you can get it but it will usually have a lot of brush strokes and it's really temperamental so when you're brushing when you're adding the paint and then it starts drying and then you brush back over it it will kind of give like a random like bulk and like not be smooth which is what you want to avoid like you want everything to look super smooth because if you're just looking at a horse like it i can't i'm so sorry if you're just looking at a horse it's not going to have like a bunch of random blobs of paint sticking on it so basically the, you want to achieve a very smooth look on all of the customs that you do and that is one of the hardest things to do to get a nice smooth gradient of pigment but also have a very very smooth surface that's not grainy or anything which is what most people run into when they're using pastels and another question that i do get is like oh you have this magical airbrush like wow i don't understand what's going on um that's not really the case honestly like airbrushes are pretty nice but um they have a very steep learning curve as i've said many times before and also it took me about a year i'm so confused what's happening it took me about a year to learn how to use the airbrush um like well and i'm still learning like all the time and it's not really something that you can always learn from a tutorial video a there's not a lot of tutorials and b it's something that your hands just have to learn how to do it's not really something that you can watch someone else do and then like completely grasp how to do it like right away so it really does require a lot of practice to do um to finally be able to get something that you want to look like the way you want it to and you know figure out where you want to be shading and adding highlights and etc um so but i also still use pastels yeah this is why it was coming off gray um i still use pastels for certain things in certain areas especially if a color is like weird and i'm not getting it right i'm like oh it should be a little bit more red like i still use my pan pastels and it's it kind of adds a really nice look because it will almost add on to the pigment that's already there and it it kind of it just kind of builds to it and it doesn't i don't usually find that it gets grainy or anything so that's pretty nice oh my god fun times um, so this is the other guy that I was telling you about. He has, like, a pretty cool coat color going on. So, um, yeah. I find, basically, all of these horses on Pinterest. And the nice thing about Pinterest is most of the time you can get a link that will send you to the page that it's from. And I am a big believer in, like, whenever people send me reference pictures, I love when... Especially if they're like a Pinto or something. Like if it's a just a basic color without like a lot of white markings on it. Then, you know, it's going to be this more or less. It's going to be the same color on the other side. Unless there's like something crazy going on. Um, but for Pintos and everything, it's really, really difficult to find another side. I think that matches the style of the Pinto. I mean, there for certain, for most Tobianas, it's not that big of a deal. For Overos, sometimes... Um, for like skew balds and some, certain roans, I think it's really useful to have the same horse from the other side because they're 
pattern can have so much variation in it and it really depends on the horse. This is also very true, I think, for Appaloosas. Um, for the one that I just did that I was showing you guys earlier with the weird spots on the muzzle um, that are actually there, uh, I was having a really hard time finding the other side of the picture, like from the original source. So then I tried looking up like Appaloosa patterns with a bay blanket and I had a really hard time finding one that looked like the one that I was painting. So I ended up just using the mirror image of the other side, which is not fully accurate. Like your horse is not going to be a complete mirror image as it is on the other side if it has white markings. But um, I was kind of like, you know, it'll probably be fine. Um, and you can't tell because if you're just looking at one side, you wouldn't know that the other side looks similar. And I kind of added some stuff that made it a little bit different. But for the most part, it's so nice to have like paints from one side as well as on the other side or pintos or, you know, yeah. So another thing was I, I have been calling pintos paints for so long and it's kind of funny because like paints are the breed, but pinto is the color. And I've just been like paints, paints when I'm like painting a Arabia and they're like, this is a paint, no. Uh, so very fun times. Well, I mean, if it's on an Arabian, then it's a Pentabian, but you know, like anyways, like it's fine. Oh yeah, that was a mistake. Um, So I'm just gonna add these awesome white markings and also some pretty exciting news. So I got this book a while ago, the horse genetics book. I don't know if you guys remember that, the color genetics book. And I really like that book. However, it's kind of annoying to have to flip through to find different pages. <laughs> Oh my god, Stetson. And um, someone actually messaged me on Instagram and they were like, oh, I found this book on eBay and it's one that I've been looking for forever. And I kind of forgot that I was looking for it. So um, thanks for the reminder. I ended up buying it off of Amazon. It's the Equine Tapestry. I really love their blog. Um, they have some really awesome information on just like um, really cool horse, ugh, horse coat colors and like equine genetics which is super cool if you guys haven't looked into that, you totally should. So I started reading some of her blog posts and absolutely loved it. And then when I was doing um, National Model Painting Month, Nami Paimo, um, I was like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. Like they were giving them out as prizes and I really, 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 really wanted to get it, but of course I didn't. Um, so I actually went ahead and bought it myself. It was like $35, but you know what? I think it's worth it and it's a book. So my parents ask, why is this Amazon charge here? Um, it's, it's literature. I need it. So parents will support exploration of education, hopefully. So <laughs> yeah, or at least I'll just pay for it if it's not, which is what I do. Also throwback to the time when everyone was like, you're so spoiled. You get all these toys. And I'm like, um, no, I actually like work. I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> those were fun times. So glad that doesn't happen anymore. Actually like watch 10 people comment and be like, you're so spoiled. Look at all these toys you have. Um, no, <laughs> not true. I'm going to be working two, possibly three jobs this summer. I mean, I think YouTube is sort of a mini job. Are you kidding me? No, your hair is gonna be blocking the prettiest part of you. No. Oh, highly annoyed currently. I didn't think about that. Stupid. Okay, whatever, it's fine. Um, okay, whatever, whatever, we're good. We'll just kind of improvise here. Oh God, I hear my dogs doing something they should not be. Also super exciting news. Like so exciting, you don't even understand. Our dishwasher has been broken since January. Since January. And today someone came to and fixed it because it was missing a part that we had a special order and like it was on back order. So since January, we have been, I know this is like kind of might be I don't know if mo I feel like most people have dishwashers, so I don't think this is like super preppy or anything, but like we had to hand wash dishes for so long and like our family's just not used to doing that and it was just like really burdensome 
for us. I mean, I, I think, I, I assume most people have dishwashers, so I don't think this is a very preppy thing, but I, I could be totally wrong. Um, it was really, really annoying, and it was taking up so much of everyone's time, and no one ever wanted to do it. And I'm just so, so happy that now we have a dishwasher, and I know it's, it seems like a small thing to me, at least. I'm just very happy. <laughs> Dishwashers make life so much easier and like you don't understand until you don't have it for so long. Oh, what's that saying? It's like you don't understand how good something is until it's gone. I feel that way about a lot of things. I felt that way a lot during COVID. Like you don't think about just having the ability to leave the house and go somewhere without a mask and like have it be open, you know, throw back to last year when like half the places in the shopping malls were closed, like they didn't have home goods open, they didn't have staples open, they just had grocery stores. Even grocery stores were freaky to go in, I was afraid to go in grocery stores, so I've gotta be grateful for every single thing and don't take anything for granted, even if it's your dishwasher, even if it's literally anything. <laughs> So, oh boy, yeah, I'm really digging this color. I think he's like, he's a really cool bay, just a bay with like really weird counter shading. I feel like it's pretty cool, pretty snazzy. I, I really would like to see these horses in real life. Like if I could just magically see all of them and be like, hello, I'm just gonna take some photographs of you now. I wonder, you know, there probably is such a thing, but I want us to go to like one of these like horse breed, like, like not a not a horse show, like, but like a horse show. <laughs> like, you know how they have dog shows and it's like best in show. Like, I want to go to one of those with like the coolest patterns, like the coolest unexplained equine genetics and that kind of stuff. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to go to that, and then just take a bunch of pictures and then just paint all of them. I think that would be super snazzy. And for those of you who are my fellow Pinteresters, I want to know if you guys know of the tickled fancy on Tumblr because every time I find this really cool horse, it's like I go to the site and it's like tickled fancy on Tumblr and I'm like, but like you don't have the other side of the horse so like leave. But apparently like they I don't know where they get all these pictures from. I would like to know. I don't think they have been posting recently, but they have lots of pretty, pretty horses that I'm like high key obsessed with. So if you want to like show yourself, that would be wonderful. Really nice. Yeah, please do. Has anyone here worked on like worked at a fast food chain before? Because I'm like kind of nervous. I have no idea what to expect. I've never, I don't like Taco Bell's food. Like I don't eat any of it. Like I'm a vegetarian, but like also, you know, they have vegetarian options, but like I've just never really been a Taco Bell gal. Um, so I don't know what to expect. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be making food, question mark. I don't really know. I never worked for fast food. I don't know what I'm doing. This will be a very <laughs> special experience, I'm sure. I'm gonna have so many interesting stories to share. So that's gonna be quite the thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I went in today and literally I pulled in to, to get my interview and some guy, like as I was, literally as I was walking in, like parking my car, he drives by the door and throws out the window his drink at the person at their car. And I don't know how he knew it was their car. And I walk in and this lady is like, oh, we're not open for dining yet. And I was like, oh, I'm here for an interview. And she's like, oh, okay. And she's like, oh, that's my car. Like, what did that guy do? And then she's like, oh, he was super angry. I'm, I'm like, wait, what? And she's like, oh, like she, he ordered here. I was like, whoa, like, what the heck? I don't want my car to be, like, thrown stuff at. Like, oh my god. I was a little, a little, a little put off by that. I was like, okay. I hope that doesn't happen to me. Like, um, that's pretty special. 
I, I, I was like really confused too. He just like literally like was so aggressive and just stopped and like threw it at this woman's car, like his entire drink. That's kind of like so, so sassy. Like why would you buy a drink? Like, you know, you're just wasting your money. You bought a drink and now you're just gonna throw it at someone's car. Like that is, and the person that gave it to you, like what did they do? Some people just haven't been having a nice day. Oh my God, that reminds me of one. I was walking out of, I was walking into TJ Maxx, which is like a clothing store. And I was like driving to park. And I didn't, like I was going really slow, but this lady was like not giving, like she was not giving me the signal she was gonna cross the street. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna keep going. And then I park and then she like comes up to me and she's like, oh, you're such an A. And she's like, you effing didn't even stop and like you're such an a and i was like um okay um thanks and like i was just so it really turned me like my entire day was like turned off after that like i was so i was like what did i do to you like i'm so sorry like but I was like, you're a terrible driver i'm like what you were not being clear she's like you didn't even stop I'm like, okay i'm sorry you must be in a very bad mood to be yelling at a person that looks pretty darn young and like doesn't look very well, like I looked not that old. I mean I was wearing a mask. I don't know if they thought I was like older or something, but I don't know, man. That was uh that was quite the experience. I was pretty shocked that she just was she had the audacity to come up and be like, You stink. But um yeah, we're just gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna go there. Can we just take a minute and appreciate how now my dogs are silent that I'm like almost done filming this video like now they're not even talking like thank you so much dogs basically after this stage what I will do is I use a little mixture I have in this awesome like what are these even called I think these are like for salad toppings it's like salad topping container so I have this mix of unbleached titanium and then, oh, this is literally the wrong white. Oh my God. I thought this was just white, but this is transparent mixing white. I'm so dumb. Why did I? Are you serious? I thought this was literally white paint. Oh my God. Whatever. Okay. I guess I was going to have to go overturn that. Okay. Anyways, I use white and, um, I'm going to titanium and then what I do is I go over it with a brush and to do this I always use a square brush and I make sure that I have to it has to be super smooth or else it will turn out terribly so um I take it and I do this because the original white is way too bright like it's like so unrealistically white um and then I just add it on top really thin layers and I always make sure that there are absolutely no brush strokes and I don't always go to the top because the apple barrel basically outlines pretty well um if you want like where the marking will go and sometimes you can go in with like a really small detailed brush and add like smaller details into where you want the edge to go um so then i will i don't go all the way to the top but then i'll go back with a smaller square brush and then really like go into the fine details so that i can get the whole thing looking like the same color and not like semi-transparent so um yeah that's what i basically do and sometimes this will require more than one layer sometimes i'll alternate so if it's really not coming out I'll, I'll do um a layer of apple barrel and then a layer of acrylic and then a layer of apple barrel and then sometimes if i i will go back with the with the watered down apple barrel to go over the edges because i find that that is a lot easier to do than working with the liquid text because the liquid text is a lot thicker and it doesn't like flow as easily into the small areas that you want it to go into unless you thin it down a ton and then it loses a lot more pigment than just the apple barrel the apple barrel retains pigment when you thin it down for the most part or more so than the other one so that is what i do and i think for this girl i'm gonna ask the commissioner if they want the feathers to be a little bit like um dirt like browned so they're like a little dirty looking because that would be, for the most part, what uh, you would see on a natural draft. But um, some people 
really like the bright white look. That's what I will do on most of my customs because I find that that's what people like. However, it is definitely more, much more realistic to have a yellow and white um, because let's be honest, our horses are not clean and they're not gonna be sparkling white like ever <laughs> for the most part. All right, Roses, I hope that this video was helpful with you making your white markings and you had fun chatting with me and crafting with me. You have less than two months to order a commission and please do not wait until the last minute because I will not be able to fulfill all of your orders. And of course, don't forget to check out my website. I have tack for sale, riders for sale, I have my own customs for sale and lots of other stuff so go explore there and link for that will be in the description you can also go right there please this sweet generous person that you are like this video and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to stay sweet Mwah.